gotten on. What do you want to do, talk to him? I hang up on him. I'm not being rude. I don't want to hear any more of that. You don't know me. I'm not your friend. We're not friends. I see, that's the problem. I'm too familiar. People listen to the show. They think it's like a party line. They think they're talking to a friend. I, okay, I want to be your friend up to a point, but I'm not. I'm not your friend. And the thing is, it gets too familiar for the average listener to listen to it. So I hang up if it's boring to me because I know it's boring to you. And the audience is very uh, fickle. The audience is to radio is fickle like everything. It's click, 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 turn, turn, turn. Like on television. Look, you sit with a clicker in front of a TV, right? Click, click, click. What do you think they're doing in radio? Click, 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 click. They're clicking. So clicked. Everyone's clicking. Used to cluck, now they're clicking. If it clicks like a duck, it's a clicker. Whatever. The point is, is that I got to keep the show moving. So the most important thing is that I enjoy it. The day I start not enjoying my show is I'm out of business. You can tell when someone's calling it into their board. The minute you hear the same thing over and over again all day long, you know already what you're getting. So if I have to entertain myself, I will. I'm like a monkey in a cage sometimes. I have to play drums. I have to eat on the air. Whatever I have to do to keep my energy and spirits up. Oh, the stick just fell on the floor. That actually happened now. The stick from the timbales fell on the floor. I keep a set of timbales here in the studio. Sometimes I play during breaks to keep myself up. So here's the news. Oh, and a poem I gave you today, all for, all for the price of nothing. You paid nothing for the show. Everyone's a star behind their car. Did you hear that brilliant poem? No one, not, not a word. That's why I didn't take a call. They only want to talk about topics like that they could read on the Internet. I read you a poem. I wrote it for my guts. No one heard it. No one cares what I do. This is the problem. I could speak in eight languages on the I could speak in Latin. I could read the Bible in Latin and no one would care. I get a call, Mike, I want to say to this about Ted Cruz. You know, the fact is he's the only one who really knows the country. That's what I'm going to get anyway. So that's why I'm not taking callers. Because I don't want to go back to the, to the single-dimension radio show. I could read the Holy Catechism in, in Latin. Nobody would call. I write a poem for my heart, the most brilliant poem you heard all day. Everyone's a star behind their car. Everyone's a star behind the car. Everyone's a star from afar because everyone's marred. Everyone's slightly marred. The brigadier, the buccaneer, debonair or doctrinaire, the gondolier or the pamphleteer. Everyone's a star from afar. And I was trying to make a point with it. Zero, no call. Because it's too, it's too esoteric. Maybe that's my problem is I'm too esoteric for this medium. I think that radio has changed. I think the audience in America has changed as a result of a number of factors. A lot of people have tuned out. Now they're tuning in. And all they want to hear is, you know, what are the results in, in, in uh, Poughkeepsie? What do they need a radio show to tell them what the results are in Poughkeepsie? You can get it on the Drudge Report in two seconds. So you've got to get something different from me than what you can get off the Internet. Isn't that the object of radio? And the day we become... See, there used to be a time that radio was unique and it was different from the Internet. Now, if all we're doing is, is repeating what you can read on the Drudge Report, what are you listening to us for? Therefore, enter Michael Savage. I've got to do what I do, and I've got to broaden my, uh, my show the way I used to do. I want to go back to what I used to do. I'm so tired of politics, I could start smashing things into the, into the, into the monitor. I'm tired of it. And if I'm bored of it, you're, how many times can you hear already the same thing over and over again? Trump won. Oh, you didn't know that Saturday night? You already saw you turned it on for two seconds, bleary-eyed. There he was. There's Melanie again. How, how are you? Jackie Kennedy, how you doing? The children, the daughters, I love them. Have it, let's get the election over with already. Let them go into the White House, see what the furniture was, what furniture was stolen. See what they can find on the way out. Did they, why do the Democrats always steal furniture? Did they ever find what Hillary Clinton took? Remember that big story when they left? I think took ashtrays and stuff. I don't know what they... What was that big scandal? Forget about it, but they cleaned it out. They took all the good stuff. They took the China. <laughs> they sold it on eBay. What if you pick it up one day? It's genuine White House, <laughs> White House porcelain. <laughs> White House tablecloth with a monogram from the White House, from the East Room, the West Room, the North Room, the South Room. We got sheets from the Truman Room. We got pillowcases from the FDR Room. All the linen from the other room was burned after this administration because no one knows it was in there. <laughs> We got the room where Al Sharpton slept. They had to fumigate the room. They had to burn the room to the ground. They took it down to the studs after he slept there. Trump comes in. He's got to take the White House down to the studs. Sorry. I'm sorry. That was very funny. No, I, I just am like I'm into house renovation. Like a little thing. Like house, some house you have to take down to the studs. 
That's you don't know what's coming next time. So here I am. Is anyone enjoying this show? Robert, I don't know. See, it's no one it's the problem with not a live audience. If I was in a live audience and I'm looking at you and I say smiling, people, yeah, go on, Mike, right, right, right on, just see their faces. But in radio, I'm staring at two guys in Dallas, a board operator named Robert Borowski, nice young man, and I see the back of uh, his head, Jim's head, Jim Verde's head. The, the, the back of his head, he's looking at stock quotations on his screen. He thinks I don't know that he's not working on the show. But don't look, I see graphs he's looking at. He must have a big investment portfolio. Instead of looking for stories and sound, he's always like, how is investment? I'm joking, come on. It's good nature. I only see two people. Dog's not with me, it's Monday. Monday is hair day. Twice a week he goes to Irene the groomer, Monday, Friday. You know what kind of money I spend on hair for that dog? She said, oh, he's nice, man. It must cost you a lot to take care of that poodle. He looks like a little bear. I said, yeah, he goes to the groomer twice a week. Women get jealous. Twice a week, yeah, more than I go. I go like twice a year to a barber. That's if I even go twice. I don't even go twice a year. And I'm getting like unkempt. I'm something like I don't care anymore. No, I do shave. That's the first sign. That's bad. Older guys who don't shave, that's it. That's like the loss of of like self-respect. Watch out for your old man if he's in the house. He starts wearing like sweatpants and doesn't shave. That's intervention. Don't, don't let him say to you he's just, he just wants to be natural now after all he is working for a company. Don't let him get away with this. The next, this next stop is like a senility. The next thing you know is he'll, wear, he'll put his pajamas on over his sweatsuit and then he'll put a tuxedo on over his pajamas when you have to go to a wedding. You've got to get him under control. Guys go out faster than the women, the mind, the mind because if they work, they don't know what to do with themselves after they retire. What's the point of this retirement business? If I ever retired from anything, I'd be dead within six months. There's nothing out there. It's like a blank. There's like a blank world. I spent all day yesterday trying to enjoy myself, and I actually did. I loved it, doing nothing. I actually found that I could do nothing. That's the funny part. I found out that the naturalist in me still lives. I took I took the old camper. I have a 2006 Chevy camper van. Looks like new, like showroom. It's only got 20,000 miles on it. I bought it new. I rarely go. You know, use. Took it out. Loaded it up with a picnic, like a penguin cooler, whatever it's called, a little coolers. I haven't done that in years. You know, you get a certain point of affluence, you don't do that anymore. You're not allowed to do that. It's like for the poor people. I filled up a picnic cooler for Teddy and I, and I went down to a certain area I like, I won't tell you where, and I listened to the water coming in, and I walked around by the water, and I picnic just for an hour or two. You know what? It was beautiful. It was, suddenly it was 1968 again, and I realized I could turn the clock back if I really wanted to. I could turn the clock back, and that's what I'm trying to say to you. Then at night, I went to that Latin club for a couple of hours, and I heard the, the great Latin music. The band was astounding. You know, you say, oh, nothing's as good as it was. This was so good. This is a local group of Latino guys. Well, there were some white guys in the back. One of them was a flautist and a trombone player. I never heard anything like this since the old days. The timbales player was as good as uh, El Rey de Timbal. I'm telling you, like, it was so good watching everyone dance and enjoy themselves. It was, and then ethnically, I, I told you this before, it's an important point. As an older white guy, it's nice to go into a club that's mainly Latino and black guys and, and get along with everybody. What's the big deal? You see, because we live behind closed doors, the closed doors of our mind. And we start building up these barriers, you know, like, oh, I go in there, it's not going to work. Everyone's going to hate me because I'm white. No one hated anyone. If they did, I wouldn't have known it. And it's a crowded floor. You know, you brush against someone, excuse me, both ways. Everyone's polite. Nobody wants a problem when they're out to have a good time. And what I'm saying to you is it, it opens up your mind again to the world the way it really is, as opposed to the way the newspapers make it. Now, of course, there's areas you can't go into. I get that. Like all of San Francisco in certain areas. The cops don't even go there. I'll be back in a minute. Greatest group in history. So I, this is a world breaker. I mean, if you listen to this show from from the beginning to now, it's the first show in 21 years where I've not taken a single call. Not one. Not one call. I don't know why. I don't know how it happened. The only call I was looking forward to I didn't get, it would have sounded something like this. Mike, I'm uh, with the FBI. Uh, I can't. Uh, I'm behind the voice modulator. And listen, drop that thing with Apple, will you please? Because the fact is they've already gone in the phone and the calls were made right to DHS. But... Uh, head of DHS was out with a migraine. <laughs> Just let that go, would you, Mike? If you know what's good for you. Bye now. Mm. We didn't get that call. 
But uh, here we are in the Savage Nation on the iPhones, the uh, B phones, the C phones. I read a report today that uh, people are buying what I have, a flip phone now. They're so tired of the uh, iPhones connected to the Internet, they want to be unconnected. I got a phone. I have an iPhone. I rarely use it. And then I have the old phone, the kind that the guys on Mulberry Street <laughs> use in New York. <laughs> I have an Italian friend. He laughed. He came in from New York. He said, you still have one of those old phones, a flip phone? He says, yeah. He says, my friends will have five of them. You know, we throw them away every day. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't hear that one. But I use the phone not for any uh, nefarious purposes. It's, it gets reception in, a, in an elevator. And that, it's that what do I need it for? Connect to the Internet everywhere I am. Every second, I don't look at it. And I lose it all the time in my pocket. I have to call it to find out where it is. Then I ask the dog. He gets there. I get him nervous now about the cell phone. It's so small. Teddy, where's the phone? He gets nervous. He looks up. What do I know? Eddie, you're the person. What do you want from me? I was sleeping, having a good afternoon. What do you ask me about a cell phone for? You're supposed to be a dog. You're supposed to know these things. I don't know about phones. They don't smell. It doesn't smell like the back of another dog. Leave me alone. I'm tired. Go away. It's been the Savage Nation. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Come back tomorrow. Be here. Same station. Savage.